Just you? Yeah. yeah. All right, we're going to get started here. <laughs> really? Yep. Wow. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm curious to see if I do say the same thing or not. I'll let you know. Yeah. I'm going to wait a couple of seconds here, see if anybody joins us this morning on Facebook. So we're in chapter 8. It's a few verses, not a not a whole lot, so I'm actually gonna jump over to John chapter three at the end there. So, well, is anyone out there? Hello, hello, hello. Anyone there? I, I don't know if you guys have seen the pictures and videos of the uh, rescue mission for those what 14, 18 kids. Pretty amazing tunnel. Wow, and somebody was saying, now, when I was reading the article, they're saying that it was filled with some water that it had rained or something like that. But this one post said that they were praying that it doesn't rain because it rains quite often. That it didn't rain while they were rescuing them, and as soon as they got them all out, it rained because that tunnel gets filled. So they had tanks, oxygen tanks, and so forth. They still had to use them because there were some areas that were underwater. But that was pretty amazing. Well, okay. Good morning. Welcome to Calvary Chapel Inland. Hopefully you'll join us as we just continue on. I'm Pastor Ruben. Thank you for joining us today. We stream live on Facebook Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. If you're in a neighborhood, you'd like to join us, we'd love to have you here at 5383 Martin Street in Harupa Valley. Today we are in the book of Revelation, and we are in chapter 8, looking at the seventh and final seal, but it will bring about... Uh, let me see, seven trumpets of God against uh, the earth. So we're dealing with a lot of judgment right now. There you are. There's a few of you. Thank you for joining us, guys. Let's go ahead and pray. We're in Revelation chapter 8, if you want to grab your Bibles. Heavenly Father, we just pray for your Holy Spirit to be our teacher. Pray that you would just teach us one thing today, Lord. If not two or three, is wonderful. But just one thing today that we can take away from this. And just um, be encouraged, be strengthened, um, find peace in our life, and know that our God has, loves us, cares for us, he has a future and a plan for us, and that everything is going to be okay because we're in Christ Jesus. And he has provided uh, salvation and safety for his children. And so, Lord, minister as we read your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, all the way from Walnut anyone else there please uh if i can encourage you to share this we seem to be getting more views on on my post or live streams and church so just continue to to share and hopefully god will will use his word um in a mightily way good morning willie glad you could join us missed you all right we're, we're in revelation chapter eight as i said chapter seven was kind of a, a little intermission uh, from the wrath of God that's coming upon the earth, these seals, seven of them, which were judgments coming on the earth. And so from this point on, chapter 6 to 11, we're seeing judgments coming upon the earth during the tribulation period, not during, uh, not during the time that the church is still here. So let me just re say this again, and I think I said it earlier on when we start Revelation. Remember, when someone begins to say or write a book and say that we're in the times of the Armageddon or the ends here or Antichrist is here or Trump is Antichrist or Obama's Antichrist or Bush is Antichrist and every year our president's Antichrist or, or one of the other nation leaders, Putin's Antichrist. I remember when Gorbachev was Antichrist, you know, they are type, they could be types of Antichrist, but they're not the Antichrist. That is going to happen during the tribulation period. So don't believe those guys. They're just trying to sell books and they're trying to make money off of the fear of people. Uh, we will not see any of that stuff. We will not see destruction upon this earth, not until the tribulation period comes. And by the way, also, you don't have to fear. This earth is not going to be destroyed. There's not going to be a nuclear war that destroys the whole earth. Is there a possibility that maybe just a part of the earth? Yeah, that's possible. That, that may be the nuclear war, just like Japan, something like that, that, that happened back then. That's possible, but to destroy the whole earth, that's not going to happen, because God has a different plan. So, 
we are looking at the judgments that are coming upon the earth during the tribulation period. And then we had this little intermission in chapter 7, and we saw what God was doing in heaven by the martyrs, first sealing the, the Jewish people, and then uh, the martyrs who were serving him on earth, uh, entering into heaven, getting white robes, and then continuing to serve. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and start with chapter 8, looking at the last and final seventh seal. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour. Now, that's interesting. You might say, well, why was there silence uh, for a whole half an hour? Everyone just kind of was quiet. One of those times when they say, could we just have a, a prayer of silence here? And everyone just is silent. And they do that because they don't want to offend anyone, right, of their various religions and so forth. So let's just all agree to be silent and pray the way that you, you want to pray. And that's fine. Here we see a whole half an hour. Now, that would be my whole study time this morning. A whole half an hour of just sitting here and looking at each other and just waiting and waiting. I believe that's what it's signifying. It's a waiting and anticipa anticipating uh, the severity of it that's coming upon the earth. It's kind of like building up and building up. And then also when that half an hour comes, it's going to just come down upon the earth. Now, remember, these are seals of judgment, trumpets of judgments that are coming upon the earth. They're all judgment calls. How those judgments look and, and how they're described by John, you know, uh, is very unique, but we really don't know the actual details of them all. So we'll see that in a second here. So a half an hour of silence. And I saw the seventh angel who stood uh, before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. So now we have trumpets in this scene. <laughs> and then we'll have bowls uh, later on. Um, these are all judgments that are coming upon God. God is going to use trumpets here, and trumpets is interesting. Trumpets was, uh, 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 it's an instrument, a tool that was used for various reasons. Uh, you were assigned a trumpet. It was your trumpet. You practiced that trumpet. Uh, you didn't just practice to play tunes and worship, but you also practiced to be the loudest in trumpeteering. Because oftentimes when you were a trumpet player, you were put on the wall, and all you did was wait and look for something to happen. And this is interesting because they're waiting a half an hour and the trumpets are getting ready. So, and as soon as you see some commotion going on, maybe a, a troop coming in or a nation of forces, you just blew that trumpet as loud as you could. And then of course, all the other trumpeteers would blow too. And that would warn the children of Israel, whoa, we need to close everything up. We need to prepare for battle because the enemy is coming. Um, the trumpets were also used uh, to lead the people. So if it's time to to stop, then the trumpets would sound a certain tune and everyone stopped. If time to go and keep moving out, and then children of Israel would move out once the trumpet sounds. So they were used for various reasons of direction and guidance and so forth. In this case, they're used for judgment, that judgment was coming. And seven trumpet sounds are going to be taking place here. So this angel, we don't know who he is, has a trumpet. And another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. And he was given much incense and he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hands. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thundering, and lightning, and earthquake. It's kind of like the the, the, the drum is playing, and getting up and gearing up, and thunders and lightning, just like this morning when we woke up. Some of you may have heard the thunder and lightning in the, in the atmosphere. Um, I was up about 4.30, and my window just glue, glowed, and then, not glued, <laughs> glowed, and then I counted, and about nine seconds later, the thunder, and it was pretty loud, so that must have been a big one wherever it was at. Uh, that's what it's going to be like, and then the trumpets will begin to, to sound. Now, what are the censers and the prayers? These are the prayers of the saints that are ascending. The censers suggesting smoke. Uh, you having a barbecue, the smoke ascends. And so God's uh, signifying that the prayers of the saints are ascending to heaven so that he hears uh, the cries of his people. So let's look at uh, these trumpet sounds, and they are from 8 to chapter 11. Chapter 10, I believe, will have another little intermission, and then we'll finish up in 11, the trumpet sounds. Verse 6. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and hail 
and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown into the earth, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. So the first trumpet, apparently very clear, they know what hail is, hail mingled with blood began to fall upon the earth. Now you'll hear commentators say that these were pretty good sized hail storms, maybe the size of baseballs, softballs, some would even suggest bowling balls, you know, that big, mingled with blood coming down upon the earth and just causing havoc. Again, this is God's wrath coming on the earth. This isn't nature. It's not mother nature. This is done by God himself judging the earth. I know, I know we don't like to hear that, but judgment is coming upon those who have rejected Jesus Christ. If you receive Christ, that judgment will not come upon you. Let me just say that at this point. So, what is destroyed? A third of the trees were burned up and all green grass was burnt because of this. So these uh, hailstorms caused fire, probably from the friction hitting the ground, sparks and so forth, and it just accumulated. Second trumpet. Then the second angel sounded and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea and a third of the sea became blood. Reminds me of Exodus chapter 7, right? Where, where the, one of the plagues was that of blood and the sea became, uh, the waters, the Nile River became blood. And a third of the living creatures in the sea died and a third of the ships were destroyed. So ships were destroyed. They were all in the ocean seas from every tribe and nation and group. Uh, but along with that was all the sea creatures, uh, up to a third of them were completely done. What was this mountain? He's describing something huge coming down, hitting the ocean waters, just... Boom, if you can imagine the waves, the tsunamis, and all these things that are taking place. And those tsunamis just destroying the ships. You've seen videos of, of flooding and tsunamis in other places, and cars just being lifted up and moving over bridges and things, and houses collapsing. It's pretty amazing. Boats just flipping over, going under bridges and crunching until they're sunk, you know. And you can imagine battleships and so forth, tsunamis being twisted and turned all over. What was this mountain? We don't know. It could be a meteor. Uh, it could be a meteor. Um, and he could be describing it in, in two different ways here because he says something great like a mountain. I'm sorry, like a great mountain. So it's like a great mountain. He, whatever it is that he's describing, he's never seen it before, but he's saying, I know what a mountain looks like. So it's kind of like a mountain, a big rock just coming down upon the earth. But look at verse 10. Then the third angel sounded and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch. And it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. And the name of the star was Wormwood. And a third of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died from the water because it was made bitter. So they drank the water or they knew that they needed water and they were so desperate that they began to drink it anyway, though it was bitter and they ended up dying. So we see here now a great star. And notice that he doesn't say uh, like, but he does say burning like a torch. I would think that John would know what a star looked like. They might not have called it stars. I'm not sure what the Greek word is there, but I'd have to look it up. But you look up in the sky and there's light in the, at night and you see these little lights, you know, so we call them stars. And there are, we don't know how many there are. Back in the early days, scientists, oh, we know that there's, you know, a million stars. And blah, blah. Then they realize, no, there's 10 million. Now there's, no, there's billions. And now there's more than billions. And they just keep going and going and going. So it could be that John saw one of those little stars just begin to fall and come and hit the earth, the waters and so forth became bitter. So not necessarily a meteor, but a star itself coming upon the earth. How does something like that happen? You have to think about that. How does something like that happen? You know, what kind of force outside of us can do something like that? If you do read the Bible, the Bible is clear that God is outside of all of this, right? Someone had, had likened earth to a television. Okay, if earth was a television and everything that existed in earth and the atmosphere and heavens and so forth, uh, that is earth and, 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 and the um, universe. And then you, a repairman comes along and he's outside of the TV and he can work on all of that. 
So that's God. You have the whole universe and God's outside. The Bible says he has it all in the span of his hand. Not that God's that huge. It's just saying that God is in total control of all those things. So if it's God, then he can just, who says he's numbered the stars, who knows and names them, and he can just touch one star and have it come down as part of this judgment. Remember, as, as a person that is bringing judgment, you have the ability to send in tanks. You have the ability to call the planes and send them in. You have the ability to push the button and send a missile. You have the ability to send a million men into there. They're all in your command. So if God is a creator of nature itself, then they're all in his command. And he has the ability to just say stars come down. Like mountain meteors come down, you know, and destroy the, a third of the water. So God is in total control of this judgment that's coming on the earth. Wormwood means bitter bitter there so the waters are bitter poisoned and they wanted to drink it now the fourth trumpet and then we'll close with this then the fourth angel sounded and a third of the sun was struck a third of the moon and a third of the stars so that a third of them were darkened and a third of the day did not shine and likewise the night and i looked and i heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice woe 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 to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blast of the trumpets of the three angels who are about to sound. So you think this is bad? I mean, one woe, <laughs> two woes, but three woes? That's like when mama's saying, okay, I'm counting to three. One, two, and three, and that's it. Bam. The seat of you know, the, the, the seed of knowledge is now going to get disciplined, right, when that happens. So if this was bad, the angel comes and begins to let the earth know you have worse things coming than these things here. And so a third of the stars, the sun, the moon, what does that look like? I don't know. As John is looking at this vision, did all of a sudden a third of the moon just come off? and fall and the sun just get destroyed did it crack you know what happened i don't know i don't know what what really happened they were struck and they were destroyed to a certain degree that there was darkness and and on the earth uh, that it did not shine and at night because the stars were destroyed there wasn't as much illumination uh, that uh the stars usually gave now thank you pastor ruben for that great devotion we are really encouraged uh, this morning to hear about all this judgment that's coming upon the earth. <laughs> I know, right? But we have to teach the Bible. We're biblicists, right? We don't just teach um, topical messages on positive things. I mean, it, it's nice and it's wonderful, but that's not real life. A lot of us are going through things. A lot of us are struggling. We have relationships that are broken. We have marriages that are falling apart. We have children that are rebellious. We have families that are separated and divided. We have uh, single families with run by uh, men and their children or women and their children. Um, we have diseases, we have cancer, we have tumors. We have, there's all kinds of struggles in life and we need hope. And I, and I get that and our hope is in Jesus. But we need to understand where those things come from. We need to understand what God is doing through those things and how he uses those things to bring men to himself. We need to understand that this world is, is corrupt. It really is corrupt. Um, this is where sin came into the world. This is where, why we have disease and struggles. This is why we have death itself. You know, people will blame God and say, why does God allow death? God never allowed death. He created the perfect garden and he created man to live for eternity. It was man who brought death into this world because they were disobedient to God. And it's true that sometimes the things that we're going through, the things that we're struggling in has been brought upon us by our own actions, by our own choices and not God. We'll blame him, but really it's us who have cho chosen to live wrong uh, chosen to do things that we shouldn't be doing and they brought destruction upon the earth so where's the hope then let's turn to john chapter 3 i just want to leave uh 
leave us with this hope. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews. And he had come to Jesus by night. And he had a question. It was burning in his heart. Obviously, he has seen Jesus, heard of Jesus, uh, uh, the testimonies of miracles and wonders that Jesus was doing. And it just burned in his heart. I got to ask this guy something. I just have to ask him uh, a question. I think that our youth today are, are going to get to a point where they're going to get tired of churches. And they already are. They're getting tired of churches that are just topical messages. They, they, they have questions. And these questions need to be answered. And Google can't answer them. And the only thing that's going to answer those questions is the Word of God. When they begin to search out who God is and what God has done and what God has said in His Word, they want reality. They want to be real. They want to be sincere. They don't want lies. They don't want cheaters. They're seeing it in our political arena, Republican and Democrats, crooked. Crooked as crooked can be. They're all crooked. Um, and they're tired of that. They want sincerity. They want honesty. They want integrity. They want these things because uh, God has put that in us to desire. And they're not getting it in the world. They're not getting it even from their, their church leadership, um, from their churches. Um, just hearing the other day how uh, pastors are were having relationships with their secretaries and uh, having relationships with uh, individuals who who are in leadership and then they find out that they've had relationships in a big church with three different women in that church and things like this that the youth are seeing and they're just going there's no honesty here there's no integrity and that's the fault of the church that's the fault of, of man trying to play religion when it's it's more about relationship and I think that there's going to come a point where, where people are asking questions and they have to go back to the Bible and simply become biblicists and nothing else. And so this rabbi here had a question. And Jesus doesn't answer it, but he does get to the root of the situation. Uh, he went to him and says, We know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And Jesus answered and said, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Straight to the point, Jesus said, unless you have changed unless something drastically happens in your life unless you come from darkness to light unless your passions your desires your wants uh, change completely you cannot see the kingdom of God that's what being born again means when your passions when your hunger when your desires change then everything else changes in your life pastor Chuck said this to, to ministers he would say this to people that that wanted to be pastors he said the first thing is that you need to be assured of are you called to the ministry? Are you called to the ministry? You got to make sure that you are called to the ministry. And if you're called to the ministry, then the next question is, are you anointed? In other words, is God using you? When you share the gospel, do people come to the Lord? Uh, when you're serving, do people have questions for you? Do you see fruit in your life? Then you're anointed of the Lord. And if you're then anointed, are you prepared to suffer the consequences of your call. I wish I would have been told that earlier on. Maybe I would have made the decision. But that is a big one right there. Are you prepared to suffer the consequences of your call? Because it is not easy. It's not easy being an administrator. It's not easy being, being someone that wants to just help people with food because you have other people that come in and discourage you and call you all kinds of names and then they can read your heart and really tell your motive. You know, and being a pastor, I think being a pastor is probably the most important position that we have in the whole world. Now, I know some of you will disagree with that. I know that uh, there will be politicians that disagree with that. I know all the city council members will disagree with that. I sat in a, in a meeting with uh, cops and clergy last night, and the police officer said, you guys have the most important job. And we really do because we have the truth as a city council member, you can't share that truth with people. You're offering them temporary hope. You're just entertaining them while they're living on this world with all kinds of little activities and so forth at times. You're taking care of, of the community that they live in, the potholes and the lighting and the security and the protection. Police officers protect us. And thank God for all of that stuff. That's wonderful. But there's no hope. There's no hope there. Neither does a police officer have. He is, he's there to protect us, but also to enforce the law. If you break the law, he's going to use force to get you. 
There's no hope. Our president there, again, he's just a glorified one to help us globally in protection and also to run all the states. But who has the most power? Who has the answer are the pastors. They're the ones that have the answer. They can take a life like Randy, who was on meth, and they can share the gospel with him, and God can come into his heart and change him completely where he doesn't need meth anymore. Not only does he not need meth, now he begins to work and be productive in life. And not only is he honest and, and has integrity, but now he's serving in a church and helping his community. That's a changed life. That's what changes the world. Not activities in your community that keep people busy, and that's wonderful and so forth, but change one person at a time, your community will change. It will change completely. I really do believe that, that pastors have <clears throat> the most important job in the world. And unfortunately, um, the devil knows that, and he has taken away that authority and power. There was a time in the early 1900s where pastors were known for that. They were very esteemed highly. Not that they wanted that or a pat on the back. That's not the point. Billy Graham used to pray at all the presidential things. They don't do that anymore. So they've dumbed that down. And once they dumb that down, our society is going to begin to dumb down also. Who needs a pastor to tell them uh, and interpret the scriptures for them when they got Google? Let's just go to Google and ask him. Unfortunately, Google will tell you what the Google writers want you to know. That's the bad part, and that's where you get misled. So are you willing to pay the cost? Because there will be opposition, there will be accusations, there will be lies, there will be pain, there will be suffering, uh, there will be divisions, there will be hatred, and that's just your family, by the way. <laughs> and then that's oh, the whole church then involved, and outside sources. So Chuck, are you called, are you anointed? Are you willing, to, are you willing, are you willing to pay the cross? Price. And then the last one, you have to be dedicated. You have to be dedicated. You have to be a person that says, no matter what, I'm going to persevere through that. And at this rate right now, we have 1,500 pastors uh, quitting the ministry every month. Every month. That start and then they quit. For various reasons. Um, a lot of it because they don't know if they're called, they're anointed, or they can endure it. But that's the struggle that we're in. So we're all in struggles. We're all fighting. We're all battling. And so Nicodemus had a question. Jesus said, you must be born again in order to enter the kingdom of God. And once you're born again, it changes your life. It takes a druggie and puts him on solid ground and on a good path. It takes a person that maybe wasn't a drug addict, but maybe liked to party and drink and smoke and, and go out a little bit here and there. Uh, his whole plan of life was just to enjoy it. But it takes a life like that, changes it, and he becomes a pastor of a church. And now he helps people uh, to see that same truth so that they can change too and find some joy. So Jesus said, you must be born again in order to enter the kingdom of God. A couple of minutes. And Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born? And Jesus answered and says, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. It is a spiritual revival in your heart. And if you're not sure, then you need to pray. Get on your knees and sort of say, Lord, would you revive my spirit? Would you revive my spirit? Would you cause my spirit to be born again? Do whatever it takes, Lord, so that I am born again. And then if you drop down to verse 16, <clears throat> Jesus says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's how much God loves the world. He took the most important thing in his life and he committed it totally, totally to us because he loved us. He wanted us to be assured and to know for sure that he loved us so much that he would give his only son. Now, if it was an angel, it's like, okay, yeah, well, I, I, okay. But his son and his only son, we have a picture of that in Abraham. So here's the hope that Jesus has given to us. If we just believe in his son and the work that he's done for us, we will not suffer the tribulation period. We'll not go through the wrath of God that's coming upon the world that has rejected him. So there's the hope. And how do I get saved? By simply asking, like I said, 
Holy Spirit, come into my life and help me to be born again. Rebirth my spirit. Give me eternal life. I surrender my life to you in Jesus' name. That's how you enter the kingdom of God. And then you take this grid of truth and you start reading it and you believe every word that's in here because it's true. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And it's all right here for us to live by. So I hope that uh, you're encouraged by the end of the message, that you're encouraged that, yeah, God is going to bring judgment on the wicked. Uh, there are a lot of people who have done wicked things and God will judge them. There are a lot of people who have not done wicked things but rejected Jesus Christ and they will too be judged. And that's sad because it's just so simple to give your life to Jesus. But judgment is coming and we can miss it by believing and trusting in Jesus Christ. And I hope that you'll do that today. God bless you. Thank you for viewing our Devo 30 this morning. And again, please share this on your wall. You never know. It's an opportunity to be an evangelist without evangelizing, without you posting your own video. Share it. Someone might get ministered. Someone might get saved by it. Had a lady come to me uh, this coming Sunday that has come here to get food. And she wanted to introduce herself. And she's been sitting and listening to the messages for the past month or so. And like, I was just totally blessed by that. Because here we are reaching out. And now we have fruit of that reach out. That we've, we have helped one person and uh, her daughter to get to know Jesus even closer. So that's the purpose that we're here for. Thank you and God bless you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, go before us this day. Strengthen us and give us power to understand your word through the Holy Spirit. And also, Lord, as we understand it, that we would, we would um, apply it to our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless.